We're joined now by CGTN's John Zorella in Orlando. John, give us some context for us. This, what, why is this moon landing such a big deal? Well, from China's standpoint, this is huge. I look at it three ways. It's national pride. From this point forward, China will forever be known as the first nation to ever soft land a spacecraft on the far side of the moon. Technologically, an incredible achievement. They orbited a satellite in order to communicate with the lander and rover. The lander and rover sends signals back to the satellite. The satellite then sends its signals back to Earth while it's orbiting the moon. Huge technological advances and science. You know, Mike, I've heard this described as exploring a new continent, a never before discovered continent. And I think that's pretty accurate um, because you're going to find that this is revolutionizing what we know about the moon as a whole. It is exploration at its very essence, a big deal. Yeah, and, and I don't think we can downplay these technological hurdles. No. I mean, uh, Russia and the U.S. never tried this. They never made missions like this, and, and it was tricky, wasn't it? Oh, without question. It was extremely tricky. There was a lot of, you know, certainly there was doubt that they could pull it off, um, but they were able to develop this satellite that would be in lunar orbit that they could communicate with. Now, let's, let's be realistic. There are still a lot of things that China's not been able to accomplish yet, but they're catching up very quickly. They haven't put humans on the moon. That's coming. They haven't sent a robotic spacecraft to Mars. That's probably coming. But China is moving very, very quickly to, uh, to become, and already is, one of the powers in space exploration. And talk to me about radio astronomy, because I've been reading a lot of articles. Everybody's talking about that and the implications for that. Yeah, there's this, this theory that scientists believe that because of the, when you're on the near side of the moon and from the U.S., you're blocked by all of this, this garbage that's around the Earth. If you can be on the pristine side of the moon and set up radio telescopes, radio astronomy to peer out, you will get a much cleaner, much clearer, much crisper vision of the universe, taking images, taking pictures from the far side of the moon. Of course, you'd still need relay satellites to get that information back, but now that China's accomplished it, it certainly will be something that can be done in the very near future. So talk to me about the implications of what we can learn, because it's not just about the moon then, is it? No, 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 it's not just about the moon. Um, you know, the moon could certainly be used for resources. Uh, this spacecraft will study and take a look at whether there might be water somewhere where they are down there at the South Pole of Aiken inside the von Karman crater. They'll look beneath the crust at the mantle because they're in this massive, massive uh, impact crater that may have exposed the mantle beneath the crust to get a really good idea of why the far side of the moon looks so different from the front side and what the moon, how the moon may have come into being so many billions of years ago. And John, when we look back on 2019, we just started this year, we may just look at this first week and just go, wow, because uh, this isn't the only bit of news about space, yeah. the new Horizons journey also making uh, headlines this week. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Within the span of a few days, two remarkable firsts. Uh, the New Horizons spacecraft going by uh, and taking images. We're now starting to see of a rock out in the out, out way out in the Kuiper Belt, some four billion miles from Earth, and it's called the uh, uh, Ultima Thule. And uh, it actually looks, uh, as the scientists have said, sort of like a snowman. And what they're saying is that you had two bodies four and a half billion years ago that somehow managed to come together almost like a little fender bender, and they basically stuck together to create this one body called Ultima Thule. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of science that comes out to that. It's a reddish color. It appears in the first images to just be very round, not very rocky, um, and it could very well lead to many more, much more of an understanding of the very early stages, the beginnings of the solar system and how the solar system came to be. Yeah, John, fascinating few days. Always great to talk to you. Yeah. Thanks so much.